Dustin goes to Hollywood. I'm Mally Moore. And you are listening to the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. Yeah. An American Werewolf in London. We had to do it. Yeah, I, I mean, duh. We had to do it because, if you haven't <laughs> heard the news already... Because you suggested it. I did suggest this one because the news broke last week that... John Landis, director of American Werewolf in London. His son, Max Landis, who you might know from Chronicle Mm -hmm. and a few other movies, American Ultra. uh, He is going to be writing and directing the upcoming remake of American Werewolf in London, which I think is pretty cool. I think it is. Is that official? I wasn't sure if that was just rumored. That's awesome. A son directing a remake of his dad's work. That's pretty. Has that ever been done before? Uh... Not the, I can't really think of any I other mean, I can't really think son. of fa- yeah. The only thing I can think is Jason Reitman and his dad. No idea. But I think his dad usually just I think helps write with him. Yeah. I don't yeah. But anyways, yeah, yeah. uh Max Landis is gonna be re- remaking this movie, so we thought it's a perfect opportunity to go back and revisit it because this is a movie that has that classic downer sad ending. That a lot of horror movies have, especially. Is this a horror movie, though? Well, I guess we can get into that when we get into the movie, but it's <laughs> by the books, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Nah. <laughs> well, we'll talk this about it. It's a weird it. movie. We'll talk about it. Well, before we get into <laughs> the movie itself, I do want to ask, what is your relationship like with this movie, Mally? What was the first time you ever saw this movie? What was your uh, initial reaction to it? I saw this when I was really little. Um this I always. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. What? <laughs> you saw this one when you were little. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> um, hope you brought enough for the whole fucking class. <laughs> um, <sighs> um, this is one of those movies that okay. How I got into film in general was I saw way too many movies, like movies I shouldn't have watched at such a young age, like The Graduate. Yeah. Um, Seven. S- no. I that wasn't, for me, that was. Uh, from Dust Till Dawn. Yep. And this movie, definitely. Um, so, yeah, this is one of those ones, like one of those movies that I saw a lot earlier than I probably should have. Yeah. And. I didn't really understand most of the jokes. Let's be honest here. Um, <laughs> there are fucking a, werewolves. Yes, there are a lot of jokes in this movie. And yeah, re- like, some that are ex- very not very PC. <laughs> I probably have not watched this movie in like eight years or something. Probably. Well, actually, my my and first there's time. There's just so many jokes that yeah. I did not catch until like <laughs> this time. My first time seeing this movie was last year, actually. It was oh, going shit. down my list. You have movies I hadn't seen that I needed to, and this was one of them. And I, I guess the jokes kind of glossed over me then, because, yeah, watching it this time, I was like, what? I guess when you're taking notes on a movie, it makes it a lot. It's like, when you watch, like, it's like, okay, I grew up watching, like, you know, Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. And then watching that now, I'm just like, what the fuck? There's a lot of really Why was I allowed to watch shit. this? Why was it on Nickelodeon? That, too. Yeah, there's really a, there's a lot of weird shit in Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's talk about the movie itself. The year is 1981. We already mentioned director John Landis. Uh, this is actually, he's quoted as saying this is his favorite movie that he's ever done. Uh, oh, it's a, he's got, I mean, his track record is amazing, too. Yeah. So that's a, damn. The film is starring David Naughton, who you might recognize, but you probably don't if you're listening to this podcast, because it's way past your prime, past your... Your generation, but he was the face of Dr. Pepper uh, for a while. And actually, this was his <laughs> first feature, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, John Landis plucked him out of uh, the commercial world and won him in this movie. And which really? He lost his endorsement with Dr. Pepper because oh, of it. Oh, man. Because Bummer. he's nude most of the movie. Yeah. And I guess Dr. Pepper frowned upon that. Yeah. This, the, I know the studio originally wanted Dan Aykroyd. flavors and nude is not one of them. <laughs> the studio originally wanted Dan Aykroyd. In one of the two leading roles, either him or Jack, and I can't remember which Holy one. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, I want to see that. That would Wait, be who did... It was, it was Dan Aykroyd and someone else. It's on the IMDb trivia. Is it which, I mean, you can... John Goodman? No, but you can, I mean, you can take 
IMDb trivia at face value. So that's true. But yeah, it starts David Naughton, Griffin Dunn, Jenny a gutter. I don't know if that's a, how you pronounce that. It just looks like a gutter. Uh, and John Woodvine, with special cameo from Frank Oz as Doctor Collins. I think is his name. Of course. Uh, this movie is eighty nine percent certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Fuck yeah, it is. It's. It, I'm kind of conflicted watching it the second time. Really? Being like, where I get why people like this movie, but I'm still like, does it 89%? That's a big number. You're right. It is. It's <laughs> almost as big as 90. It's very close to 90. In fact, one would say it is one away from 90. True. <clears throat> Let's talk about the budget, though. This movie. Uh, had a had a pretty modest budget, uh, of which I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, I'm sorry, it's, it was a ten million. You had one job, yeah, man. It had a ten million dollar budget, uh, and it actually grossed. Uh, I I don't think it was ever released internationally during its theatrical run, but the the domestic uh, gross that I found was uh, thirty million dollars. So three times its budget. It's pretty good. It's not bad. It's not bad. And I think you're mostly paying for location like because there there's a lot of <coughs> there i mean they're all over the streets of london in this movie i mean special effects alone that too to there's a been, lot of that, this I was mean, like that, the hallmark had to have been a big chunk of the budget oh yeah we'll we'll get there too at, at the very end we'll talk about the special effects and the makeup and everything and i have got a lot to say about this movie i've got three to four pages worth of notes we can talk Good about lord yeah so before we do that, let's actually get into the trailer and get like a little sneak preview of what's to come. Let's do this. This is the story of two young American students traveling through England on a night of the full moon. Did you hear that? I heard that. What was it? It could be a lot of things. Fate let one live. A lunatic must have been a very fierce fellow. Wasn't a lunatic. What? A wolf. Oh, be serious, would you? And now everything is changing. 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 John Landis, the brilliant young director of Animal House and the Blues Brothers, has turned a classic tale of terror into something new. Something different. A naked American man stole my balloon. I'm a werewolf. An American werewolf in London. Something different. From the brilliant young director of Animal House and the Blues Brothers. <laughs> Interesting choice of marketing on this one. Because mm-hmm, it the cover the, the trailer starts off kind of horror y and then kind of goes into that it goes full comedy. Goes let's full be comedy. honest. It goes full that, comedy. That blue moon cover is just so the soundtrack for this movie is insane. Amazing? Like insanely I, I amazing? I chose my word specifically. <laughs> You're a jackass. <laughs> it's a good soundtrack, but it's just like... The soundtrack's awesome. Well, we'll talk about it when we get there. I mean, okay, there's one song that belongs on the soundtrack that wasn't included. Maybe it was on purpose. I don't know why. But yeah. Okay. You know what song I'm talking about. Something with the word moon in the title. No. No? Because that's what this whole soundtrack is. It's nothing but movies. Warren Zavon, Werewolves of London. Uh, How do you not include that song? Mm, they should have had yeah. <laughs> they should have had Panic on the Streets of London, the Elvis Presley song. Oh. Yeah. That was like right there for the taking, man. Max Landis, if you're listening. <laughs> Please. If you could just get those two in there, that, that would, be, would fantastic. be fantastic. Yeah. Don't steal my word. Mm, that would be awesome. I'll take it. All right. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we get into the meat of the movie? Pun intended. 
Ha, 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 ha. No. All right. Well, my first note is that this movie is very rough around the edges. And what I mean by that is I think think John Landis (laughs) didn't have a full version in mind. Like, he didn't have the full story fleshed out feed to a feature length like runtime. I feel like he had scenes in mind. He had character moments in mind. But I feel like there's a lot of this movie where it's just kind of like, okay, okay, let's keep going. Come on, let's pick up the pace a little bit. You know what I mean? You're being I, silly this evening. Am I? I, I <laughs> maybe it's just me. I the movie is great. Don't get me wrong. I just there's a lot of parts, and I guess we'll get there when we start talking about it, where I'm just like I, I don't know what I'm supposed to feel here or why yeah, I'm... Uh, yeah, the tone of this movie is just jumps back and forth between comedy and horror mm-hmm. Yeah, and, so much. And I, I don't even necessarily just mean the tone. I mean, like, some of the dialogue is Yeah, just... there's some weird... We'll get into them, but there's, like, there's some weird little, like, lines of dialogue. Even, like, whole scenes are just like, what? Why? What are we doing? What are we doing? What was... <laughs> What was the uh, point on that one? Well, there's a character specific. We'll uh, we'll talk about when we get there. That I have no idea what the character's purpose in this okay. movie is. Okay. Uh, but we start off the movie with Dean Martin's "Blue Moon." Yeah, it's a beautiful song playing over some equally beautiful shots of foggy English countryside. Mm-hmm. Just a lot. It's almost like the "There Will Be Blood" opening, but with you can almost smell the fish and chips. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And oh, the dew and the grass. Yeah, fish and chips. That sounds good. Oh, Jesus. Uh. We are introduced to David and Jack, our lead characters that are backpacking through rural England. R- rural? Rural. R- I, I have trouble with that word. Uh-huh. I tried to gloss over it. Thanks for pointing it out. Uh, <laughs> they're riding on the man. back of a sheep truck. You talk a lot, and I just nitpick. Comment. You comment on yeah. my... T- you're, you're commenting on my commentary. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're backpacking through Europe, but they're taking a ride. They hitch a ride with this uh, this farmer, I guess, in the back of a truck with some sheep. the The farmer drops them off. Says, "This is pretty much as far as I can take you." And they have a conversation. And I guess we're supposed to just kind of get into these characters' lives and their nuances and everything. And there's a weird. This is one of those lines I was talking about. This is what's and this sets in motion the rest of the movie because there's it, there's a ton of these little lines yeah. and I'm just like, did I hear that right? And they're talking about some girl they have back home and that I think David is the one who's talking about her. Yes. Yeah, that he's kind of in love with her, and he makes a line to Jack and they're just talking about her like. I have to. He's like, I have to make love to her. It's very simple. She has no choice, really. <laughs> I was like, all right, we're starting off the movie with our lead character, who is supposed to be rooting for with a moderately rapey, L- little joke. rapey, little rapey. And, and I, see, that's one of those lines that, as a kid, I was like, why are they talking? I don't care about this. Yeah. Watching it now, it's like, this motherfucker's a rapist. And I swear to you, anyone that listens to the show regularly, we do not specifically go out for movies that have rapey tones in them. It's just somehow this is a constant. I specifically remember, I believe it was Hard Candy. Someone was was taking Patrick Wilson's side. Anyway, I was not taking his you, side. You, you totally did. I was not taking I his side. I was there. Go back and listen to the episode. You have false memories, sir. I was not defending a pedophile. I was just uh, saying I could understand where he was coming from. <laughs> All right, let's move on. That's neither, that's neither on. here nor there. We're, we're talking it about was, this movie. It was there. It was definitely there. Anyway. So they're backpacking God. through London and they Quit stop. getting sidetracked. They stop Jesus. at this, this inn slash pub. I'm not really sure what you would call it, but it's a small place. It's England. It's a pub. Well, they have no food there. And doesn't a pub have to have some kind of How do you know bar? they don't have food there? She, they mentioned it several times. There's oh, no fuck. food here. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> God damn it. They stop at this place called the Slaughtered Lamb. Because that's exactly the kind of place you want to stop in to get help. Yeah. Uh, and when they enter, there's just kind of this rambunctious uh, English uh, Englishmen that are like drinking, having fun. Aidi, 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 and aidi. like as soon as they walk in, it's like a record skip on a jukebox. Because <laughs> everyone just stops and looks. Uh, there's a guy that that's playing darts. There's another guy playing chess. Um, because England. Yeah, and they sit down, and the 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 female bartender comes over, and this woman, she's like, "What do you have?" And they're like, "Well, we want food." She's like, "There's no food here." And he's like, "Do you have coffee? No. Do you have hot chocolate? No." She's like, "We have tea." 
No, she's like uh, England. No, what she says? She says, uh, "We don't. We have." I can make, I, we have some tea. He goes, oh, can I, do you have tea made? And she's like, no. <laughs> I love that. She's like, we have tea. Can I have some tea? No. <laughs> okay. And she's like, I'll make you some tea, but we don't have any available yet. Um, and Jack notices that there's a five point star painted on uh, the side of one of the walls. And he makes a comment about it. And David's like, uh, you really want to ask him about that? This place about... <laughs> That, you know, that these people are already, like, looking at us like we're fucking crazy. And one of the... I don't know. How, I, I kind of missed how this happens. But one of the guys, one of the Englishmen that's playing chess, starts telling a joke. And again, this is one of those kind of lines yeah. that are just... We're going from rapey to... To racy. Racist? Yeah. This, uh, this guy make, tells us race... Is it... I guess it's racist? I don't... It's not even racist. He's, he's, it's like fat shaming... Slash racist, I guess. Yeah. He's telling this joke, and this joke is basically like all these people are on this airplane, the airplane's running out of fuel, and they start tossing things out of the airplane to try and make it weigh less so it doesn't run out of fuel as easily. And he's like, oh, well, you know, they start tossing out chairs, it's but it's still too heavy. So finally, uh, a Frenchman jumps out saying, you know, long live Vive la France, and but it's still too heavy. Someone else jumps out, but it's still too heavy. And then finally, the American says, like, I don't know, America, yeah, and probably. tosses out a Mexican. As he cracks open a Budweiser. Yeah, and tosses out a Mexican. <laughs> and everyone laughing like it is the goddamn funniest joke you've ever heard. And then in the midst of all this Dude. laughing, Jack just kind of just asks, hey, what's up with that five-point star? And <laughs> ev- again, everyone just stops dead in their tracks. The guy playing darts misses the dartboard, and he makes like this euphoric, like... Whole, how dare you look at Jack? Uh-huh. And he's like, I've never missed that Isn't board that before. <laughs> uh, basically, David and Jack's like, we should that dip. That joke makes no sense. No, it doesn't. He's like, we should, we should dip. And everyone's like, beware. So one of them says, beware the moon or something like that. Uh-huh. Uh, and as they leave, they're talk. Uh, the Englishman and everyone inside are talking, and the bartender's like, we can't just let him go. And they're like, you know. Well, I don't remember what the English with the guy playing chess his his like response to that is, but the guy playing darts is like, all right, I guess it's murder then. Well, yeah, because they're pretty much just like you know, well, you know, we should have told them. They're like, well, no, they just think we're crazy. Yeah, yeah, and they're like, no one told them to come in here. No yeah. one told them to leave. That kind of thing. So Jack, dun, dun, dun. Jack and David are walking, music, and they hear a howling, and we cut back to the slaughter lamb. And the bartender is like, you can't leave him out there. I actually, hears the howling. And the, the guy went just like, I didn't hear anything. Yep. As soon as he says that, ha- there's another howling. <laughs> uh, Jack makes a comment that there's a full moon outside. We hear some growling as they're trying to, to like, ignore it. <laughs> and then maybe my favorite exchange in the entire movie. Hmm. Oh, yeah. This next part. Oh, well, they're, like, trying to ignore all the growling uh-huh. and howling, and they're just kind of, like, walking fast. They're like, no, we'll, we'll just keep walking. Don't worry about it. And then they kind of stop because they realize, and David says, uh, <laughs> it's circling us. And Chad just goes, oh, fuck. <laughs> just, it's circling us. <laughs> oh, fuck. And as we don't really it's get the most s- calm reaction yeah. to something in the mist following you around. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and Jack's attacked by a werewolf. It'd be like if you were walking and like, I don't know, dropped your keys on the ground. It's like, ah, fuck. Yeah, that's kind of his reaction. <laughs> but he's a, he's attacked by a werewolf, and as he's being ripped to shreds. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's talk about, like, we're led to believe Jack and David are bros. Like, they've been mm-hmm. broing hard for years at this point. Oh, yeah, since teenagers, at least. That wolf, or werewolf, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Jumps on Jack. David's like, nope. And dips. Fucking dips. Yeah. So he, quick. He immediately he starts He does running. turn around, but like, I mean. Out of guilt. Yeah. And pretty much after the werewolf's already done all the damage he can do. Like, he just. Well, he's it's, like, it's, well, it's, every man for its fucking Well, but it's kind of that thing of like, you don't have to. If you're being chased by a bear, you don't have to outrun the bear. You have to outrun your best friend. I mean. I. You never heard okay, that? Okay, well, fuck <laughs> me and you are never going to the woods. <laughs> no, I'll never be in the woods anyway. Don't don't worry about it. Um, so David also gets attacked, but as he's being attacked, uh, the people from the townsfolk, the, the, the slaughtered lamb, come out and they shoot 
they shoot the wolf dead and, and David is like passing out from blood loss and shock and everything and as he's passing out he looks over at what the werewolf and realizes that it's just a naked old withering man that's just riddled with bullet holes and I gotta ask I think I think this movie tosses out the theology of uh, werewolves needing to be killed with silver bullets I think it's just literally it's pretty much just like a regular wolf if you get yeah, shot they it's don't dead. mention anything about silver bullets or anything okay well, David wakes up in the hospital, um, and well, he's actually not awake yet. But we cut to a hospital, and there's these two nurses, you know, talking about him and going over his charts. And one of the nurses, this is a, another weird lie, but it's it's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> one of the nurses says, "I think he's he's a Jew," and the other nurse is uh, who is actually Nurse Alex. Uh, she says, "Why? Well, why on earth do you say that?" And the other one's like, "Well, I had to look." implying that david is circumcised right i mean <laughs> well the doctor comes in i mean doctor doctor hirsch comes in and uh he explains to david he's like you were attacked by an escaped lunatic bullshit yeah uh that's maybe escaped from like a mental hospital or something whatever and in comes our cameo, Frank Oz, voice of Yoda and Miss Piggy and all the all the Muppets, mm. pretty much, comes in and he's he's uh, what would you say? Is he like a is he a doctor as well or a PI? He's something. Is no, he's not a is he's not a doctor. I don't think Wait, he's a doctor. He? Yeah, but he comes in and he's just like you know I've given the police permission to interview you and get your side of what happened, whatever. We find out that David has been uh in a coma i guess or just passed out whatever you want to call it for three weeks and uh he tries to tell the doctor look i wasn't attacked by a lunatic it was a wolf so cut to the dr hirsch in his office and i don't know what it is with this this roger matheson character doesn't exist i'm i want to bet that this roger matheson character is the name of like a producer or something or somebody at a studio (laughs) that gave john landis problems before because he's talking to like i guess his assistant and he's like oh you know i'll i'll be able to survive i survived worse than having dinner with roger matheson or something yeah and two policemen from scotland yard enter and they're asking about david and his assistant buzzes back in saying roger matheson's on the phone and he says tell him i'm dead tell him whatever you gotta tell him (laughs) i don't want to talk to him for this this goes nowhere we never meet roger matheson never comes into play but the two Police come in and they ask Dr. Hirsch about what happened with David. They go to interview David himself. And, you know, David's like, look, it was a wolf that attacked us. And they don't believe him. They're like, no, you know, nah. Like, oh, this dude's nuts. It's kind of like the two guys from Hot Fuzz that never want to admit that it's a murder. Yeah, They're just yeah. like, oh, oh, it was a wolf. A werewolf was it? Okay. You yeah. know, that, that kind of mentality. <laughs> and then we get uh, kind of like a dream sequence. Of first of a few, yeah, first of a few. That's like this foggy marsh kind of area, and David is because England sprinting through there's it. There's so many things in the movie that could just can be explained because England. Because England. Well, there is yeah, there's a lot that's coming up, but yeah, <laughs> David's sprinting through the woods naked, and he comes across a deer, and he just starts devouring this deer with his own flesh, in you know, his own hands, as just, you would. Yeah, just eating the shit out of this deer. deer. Is delicious. And we cut back to the hospital. Where Alex is taking care of a, I guess, a little Indian boy that's in the hospital. And this is the character, I, again, I don't understand what this has to do with anything in the movie. Um, hopefully Max Landis, when he does his version, can can give me some some insight on this. But there's this character today, Benjamin, and all he can say is no. Or all he chooses to say is no. Alex comes in, she's like, you know, how are you today, Benjamin? No. Uh, he's reading a comic. She's like, "Do you like comic books?" No. Okay. This kid's annoying as fuck. Yeah, basically. and it goes nowhere. I don't no. know what the point of this is. Besides this, you see him what one other time? Yeah, and he's doing the same shit then too. Yeah. I, I don't understand. But uh, Alex, no purpose whatsoever. Yeah, Alex uh, goes to David's room. She's got food for him, and he's like, "I'm not also, hungry." Total babe. Agreed. Just nurse Price, nurse Price is a total '80s babe, but oh, she's yeah. still a babe nonetheless. Oh yeah, she's on the slideshow. So, and she's in the in the bank. She's um, 
she goes to to take David some food, and he's like, "I'm not hungry." And she starts feeding him like a kid, like cutting his his always oh, like Salisbury steak or something like into pieces. Oh man, how good is Salisbury? Holding his nose, plugging his nose, so he has to open his mouth and feeding him like that. And it's flirting, I guess. I, I yeah. But anyways, I guess <laughs> we get one of the coolest scenes in the movie, which is another dream sequence. And again, David's running through the forest, England. And he sees in like the middle of an opening in the forest. Yeah, a clearing. A clearing. Will. It's it's himself in a hospital bed, just out yeah. in the middle of the woods. And Alex uh, approaches him in this dream. And as soon as she gets, comes to his bedside, he, he kind of wakes up because he's asleep in the bed. And, and he wakes up and he's got that, from the trailer, that classic yellow eyes and, and, and red teeth and everything and it's fucking terrifying looking dude. very like rocky horror picture yeah. show in yeah. that shot that's it's my favorite shot in the movie i think it's, oh, yeah. it's, 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 it's no actually i take the back it's one off there's another shot later on that is my all-time favorite shot in this movie i think i know which one i it hope is. you know what i'm talking about i think i think i think it's mine too we'll, uh, we'll get there we'll see we cut back to the hospital and i guess we're not dreaming anymore or i thought that's what we could talk or, about later on are, are we, we dreaming or not but we find out that David's wounds were clean and dressed before he was even delivered to the hospital by by the <gasps> doctor. So he's got like these gnarly like claw marks on his chest. He's got a yeah. few on his neck and face. Uh, but he's looking pretty good. And he's he seems pretty good. But again, he starts flirting with, with the nurse. Um, I think she's reading to him in the scene. Um, and, you know, he calls her a very attractive woman. You know, whatever. It's cute. And then we get... The most batshit crazy scene in this movie that yeah. is has no place in this movie and totally flips the tone to from again this this movie's just all over the it's like, place. It's almost like it almost goes like brain dead, dead alive levels of yeah, insane. Yeah, because we we get a we get a scene of uh, these two kids watching TV in this home with the dad kind of reading the newspaper and like the fireplace is going like that classic modern family of the right, right. 70s 80s and, and the mom is cooking then the doorbell rigs uh-huh and the dad gets up he's like i'll get it and he goes over and he opens the door and as soon as he opens the door he is blasted away by machine gun fire and what is it fucking nazi, nazi werewolves, werewolves. <laughs> there's just werewolves with nazi paraphernalia and wardrobe just shooting this family dead like Straight up dead yeah. as shit, burning this house. Where's we're assumed to believe this is David's family, I guess. Fuck if I know. A little side note: in the script, I found out that these were actually Nazi stormtroop, uh, stormtrooper werewolves. Holy shit! Yeah, which would have been even crazier. Just... Or Nazi stormtrooper werewolves. <sighs> Man, <laughs> I I have no idea what the scene is supposed to apply, but. No fucking clue. We cut back to the hospital. I guess David was having a nightmare. Alex comes in to console him. But just kidding. We're still dreaming because she gets gutted by another fucking Nazi werewolf. Yep. And David wakes up from that and he's just going. out, they drag you back. <laughs> he wakes up in the hospital again. He's just like, holy shit. <laughs> um, but then we get first of many where David is hallucinating and he sees Jack. Uh, but not just Jack. He sees Jack. Dead ass Jack. Post werewolf attack. He is like all ripped, fucked up. Ripped to shreds. Like he, has, he like the claw mark. Like it's like four. Like it's yeah. It's like he got clawed in the face with four claws right on his face. Yeah. And just everything from his cheek down his chest is just like ripped off. Almost from like his eye socket. Yeah, like, like all the way down. Dude, the it's fucking and like it's still like even though this is what 81, mm -hmm. it still looks it still fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, it holds up so well. And even though Jack is like mutilated, he has this most upbeat, optimistic Oh, he's like, hey man, I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, man. Just, just, I'm just glad to be in the building. Uh, he, he tells he tells uh, David, we were attacked by a werewolf. He's like, uh Another funny line in this in this movie that's just really okay is he uh, explains to David he's like look I'm forced to walk this earth in limbo until the bloodline of the werewolf is is ended and David hears this and just goes shut up yeah 
Like, it, like, I thought it was really some funny. of the back and forth between like David and Jack is just so funny. Like the <laughs> off fuck line, yeah. that one. Uh, but he tells he tells like, uh, Jack, like Jack's kind of like doing that kind of ominous tones. Like yeah, I must walk the earth. <laughs> like trying to be go. trying to be and like spooky like, and shut up. Yeah, they was like shut up. Uh, but he t- basically tells David, look, you have to take your life. You have to kill yourself. Otherwise. You're going to become a werewolf, yeah. and you're going to kill people. Of course. And so... That's how it works. He starts freaking out. Yeah, Alex runs it. in the room, and there's just a kiss. Just a random, non-earned kiss, I no, don't think. not at all. But he kisses her, and it's so passionate, and then he just pulls her away and looks at her and just goes, I'm a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this movie just <laughs> flips tone... Back and forth. We got the Nazi werewolf <laughs> thing, and then like now this, and sh- I definitely it's it's a horror. It's almost that Shaun of the Dead kind of like middle of the road horror comedy, yeah. but <clears throat> and it kind of does the same thing where it starts off more comedy, <coughs> like Shaun of the Dead does, and as it goes, it gradually gets more and more horror filled. But then at the same time, we'll jump back into comedy. Yeah, like no problem. It jumps back and forth. And this movie is kind of like that prototype, <clears throat> I think. It was one of the, I want to say this is kind of one of the first true um, horror comedies I think like yeah. the ones that got it right, um, but yeah, Alex he I can't says really all think this of one before this so. huh I can't really think of one before yeah, no. this Alex says you know uh, you're getting discharged tomorrow which is funny because he is acting completely yeah, insane that, <laughs> and I just think it's the, funny that they're it like the 80s man yeah everyone uh, was on cocaine <laughs> so Alex uh, basically. You know, David's like, I, I, I have nowhere to stay. And Alex is like, well, you can come stay with me. Yeah. And they're they're walking down the street, and there's another one of these yep. these weird rapey lines where they're walking down the street, and David goes, you know, do you live by yourself? And she says, yes. And he says, good. good. <laughs> and then they're on the subway, Just... headed home. And this scene I didn't get either. They're on the subway, and I guess it's to show that they're flirting a little more. Uh, they're kind of in this really crowded subway, and David's like making funny faces at her. But in between him and her are just a bunch of these like English punks, like the I, I'm London and, calling. Yeah, and they're just looking at him like, "What the hell are you doing?" Because England in the eighties. Uh, they go, they they go to Alex's house. Alex is kind of showing him around. This and is my favorite line of the movie. They say, uh, you know, he she shows around the house, and he's like, you know, you can stay with me. And he's like, well, there's only one bed, and then they, well, they have a they have a sit down. I was gonna say they have a sit down. This the English is just coming off of it now. They have right, a sit down. Right, right, um, right, right. And she's she says, look, I'm gonna be honest with you, David. I find you very attractive and a little bit sad. Yeah, that. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every. Oh my god, <laughs> dude! I would be just. L- Roll I bathing in that's the Benjamin. If I'm on the dating show, that's how they describe door number one. Yeah. I, I like to think anyway. He's very attractive and a little bit sad. That's it. <laughs> but she makes a comment, she goes, you know, maybe you'd like to watch some telly while I take a shower. Smash cut to they're in the shower together making out. Yeah, and we get some close up of thighs. I even say they're making out. They're like holding hugging they're hugging intensely. Hugging Amorously, <laughs> yeah, and then we like gotta, it's just awkward. Like it, yeah. it, it lasts maybe just like a few seconds too long. Oh yeah, this whole scene is just a like little too long. Intense, mm-hmm. uh, wet hugging, and this it's the that's what I was gonna say. What is with the soundtrack? Because Van Morrison's Moon Dance starts playing, and it just totally just and it's fucking perfect. It yeah, takes you're me right. out of Moving the movie. On. It takes me out of the movie. I'm gonna take you out of the movie. <laughs> did you notice that Figure she? That did you notice that she gently bites him? A few times, which yeah. I thought was kind of funny, like symbolism. Yeah, like the like is, you know you would like kind of almost foreplay. Like you've never seen a movie before, man. <laughs> I just thought it was funny because I I I missed that on my first go around. Um, anyways, they I guess they they sleep together or whatever. In the middle of the night, he goes to the bathroom. No, and we they get, hugged all night. You're right, Com- completely complacent hugging. <laughs> oh my god, I want to write a song called. Uh, never mind. Yeah. It's about hugging all night. Anyway. We hit the old medicine cabinet mirror gag where David pushes the mirror cabinet to close it. And what, who is standing behind him but Jack, who is oh, even more deteriorated. He looks like he just came out of a swamp. Um, They sit down in the living room. They start having a conversation. And basically, Jack's telling him again, look, 
He's like, you got to kill yourself, dude. Otherwise, fucking tomorrow night, fucking record, man. tomorrow night, you're going to become a werewolf. If you don't, you're going to kill people. And <laughs> another, one his, David. another one of these weird lines. David's like, I will not be He's threatened by a walking, walking meatloaf. meatloaf. <laughs> um, Alex, Alex hears him and comes out in the living room. She's like, who are you talking to? I heard voices. And I got to say. Is there nothing... I cannot agree more. Oh, my God. My note literally says, is there anything sexier in this world than a woman in just a long t-shirt and nothing else? Not not even just a t-shirt, your Your (laughs) t-shirt. Because she comes out with this this college collegiate t-shirt on, and man... It works. (laughs) It it totally works. Dude, okay. This is probably weird. There is nothing sexier than a girl, like... In like comfy mode. Mm-hmm. That is just the fucking best. Yep. Nothing beats that. Hoodie and sweatpants or just a long t shirt. Whatever. If they're comfy, I'm in. Yeah, you stay comfy, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stay warm. Get under that blanket. <laughs> Anyways. I'm going to get a t shirt, mate. <laughs> back to this movie. Dr. Hirsch decides he's going to do some investigation because he's starting to, I think, believe David a little bit. He goes to the slaughtered lamb and he's asking, you know... What's his motivation for suddenly believing David? I don't know. I really don't know. Like, but we don't see him up until, like, we see him when, at the hospital. Then we see him in this scene. And all of a sudden, he's just like, you know, maybe he, maybe it was a werewolf. Yeah. It's like, what? But he goes to the slaughtered lamb and the same people are in there. And I gotta ask, could these people be any more suspicious? Because they're like... We never heard of David. Never he never came in here. But like it's he obviously came in there, and then, I don't know. They're just being. He's like I gotta like they come in and uh, the guy that's playing darts is like I gotta go and like puts yeah. on his coat and runs outside. Uh, meanwhile, uh, David watches Alex leave, goes to work, and there's, oh, a, there's Alex a, hitting that walk of shame though mm-hmm. out of her own house. <laughs> Dang, that whole. Oh. Damn. Uh, there's a dog that starts barking at David. There's a cat that starts hissing at David. Uh, and he's just looking in the mirror and he starts practicing growling, which is he's just like, grr, snarl. <laughs> it's like very on the nose kind of stuff. Um, but he, he does start watching the telly. And I got to say, one of the things he starts the, watching. The telly? He, really? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it. I told you. We're going to have a sit down and watch the telly. Uh, he starts Oi! watching. He starts watching the telly the of, of again. What does he watch? But professional dart playing. I don't know what the dart. I didn't even know dart <laughs> dart professional darts was a thing. But I guess any I sports know, got man. a perfect. I don't know. Because England. Yeah. Anyway, we cut back and again we get, well we get this montage of David just kind of doing ordinary shit to kind of take his mind off of everything. Uh, and we cut back to Alex in the hospital and again. We get this Benjamin character who's just. Doing the nope thing all over and over. I, I got. There's gotta the, okay, be. Okay, this is the scene I'm talking about. What is the fucking point of this scene? X. Okay, so we go through the scene. Mm-hmm. It's Alex and talking to Benjamin, and he's just like, no, 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 no. And then the weird line. Yeah, there's a weird child abuse joke where well, she goes because she's trying to get him to go to bed. Yeah, and she's like, Benjamin, have you ever been severely beaten about the face? <laughs> Not just beating like, some she's beer. Like, she's like says it while laughing. Yeah, they're both like, ha, 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 ha. Like, like she's like tickling him. Yeah, and, like and then it just cuts like it pans over to the window and you see it's a full moon. That's yep. little, I don't know why else this scene exists except to show the full moon. You could literally just have you her just like show standing the in front of a window. Full moon. Yeah. you don't yeah. have to have that weird ass little thing. Mm-hmm. But um, what the fuck ever. And then we cut back to that scene. The Nazi werewolf scene makes more sense to me than that one. I would love to find out what Benjamin's purpose is in this movie. And I don't, I never saw American Werewolf in Paris. And I don't know if that has anything to do with this movie, if any of these characters roll over. But <sighs> I don't know. Um, I know. I think it's something like Alex has a kid and the kid of is course. the main character of that. Other than that, none is of the other David's characters. Is it David's son or daughter? Uh, yeah, I think that's mm. what they imply. I want to see a female werewolf. Oh. I don't think we've ever gotten a movie where Wait, a woman... Yeah, yeah. Did um, we? Uh, trick or treat. Oh, yeah, you're we right. we got a whole fucking pack of them. You're right. Yeah. Anna Paquin. <laughs> oh, dude, how good is trick or treat? How, how awesome is Anna Paquin? <sighs> yeah. Anyway, Anyways, the transformation, the transformation scene. scene. The, the movie... The, this I feel like this scene could have gone... Could have been more dramatic if it was... 
any other kind of movie. But because this is this this weird comedy movie, it's it starts off and he's just quietly reading. You could almost hear like classical music playing and the fireplace going. And all of a sudden, David just goes, ah! And yeah, he's just sitting there and just jumps up and starts <laughs> screaming bloody murder. He's gripping his head. He's like, ah! Just out of nowhere. Like, screaming like it's so hot, it's so hot. Like, rips all his fucking clothes I'm off. I'm burning! Why not? <laughs> and he rips all his clothes off. And yeah, he just he, we get the infamous Rick Baker special effect turning into a werewolf. That still holds up, dude. It's, it's Fucking insane! Like when you, whenever like he starts getting the wolfly facial features and his like nose starts bending out. Oh, that that is the coolest part. And he starts yeah. like growling. It's like it's what like maybe like a four second shot of yeah. just like his nose extending yeah. out, and it's fucking insane. And so we get this. We get uh, a kind of a, a scene on the street where these two like happy people are walking down the street, and. They get attacked in the park, and my note just says "not Harry," because yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the guy's name. And yeah, David eats uh, or attacks this, the first two people as a werewolf. Uh, Doctor Hirsch, do, man. We come back to the hospital. Doctor Hirsch tells Alex that he's worried about David, and he starts saying, "You know, I think he might have been turned into a werewolf." And he's like, "I don't mean like running about on all fours and howling at the moon," which is funny because that's exactly what I he's doing. Verbatim. Uh, we get implied that David kills another guy named Sean, who's one of Harry's friends. Uh, he kills three bums that are, like, huddled up in a fire in a junkyard. And then we get probably my my favorite scene in the movie in terms of horror. This is straight classic horror. We get this scene in a subway where this man gets off a subway. He buys, yeah, himself, a, is, yeah. he buys himself a Cadbury egg, like a Cadbury... Because England. Yeah. Uh and I can ask, are subways ever this empty? Because he's the only one in this subway. Uh, yeah. I've never had. I've never been on a subway before, so uh, I don't know. Yeah, I lived in Chicago for a while. Like, I mean, it depends on time of day. It okay, at least. Well, this is this like got to be late, late. This is speaking like from like my experience in Chicago, but like de- it depends on time of day, obviously, and which particular station you're at. Because okay. I mean, there's like like in like up there, there's like some stops that are always busy there's always shit going on yeah there's some that are like dead as fuck yeah and terrifying well i do like this scene because this guy the subway you know drops this guy off he buys himself a candy and he hears something and we kind of see from his pov down the subway and there's nothing there yeah and you know it's that classic stalker from straight from cat people kind of thing of him just kind of walking because he thinks he's being followed and uh he starts walking through the subway a little, you know, uh, straighter posture, faster, brisk pace walk. And he stops, he goes down this, tu- he stops near this tunnel to get, you know, out of the subway. Yeah. It's just littered with movie posters and advertisements, uh-huh. which is really cool. And we get the John Landis trademark. The See You Next Wednesday. The See You Next Wednesday movie poster, which is a fake movie within John Landis' universe. Yeah. But the tagline is literally just a nonstop orgy. <laughs> Yeah, and we see that this guy I'm gonna just call him businessman we see this businessman see something and he literally just says good lord or something like that or oh yeah. my god and he just starts sprinting Booking through this tunnel and it. we don't hear David or anything I don't think no. you uh, get but like the POV shots like we get the POV shots of him chasing, like, chasing this guy and this guy Runs towards an escalator and he falls and trips he and lands. Shit. He busts face on this escalator, dude. Uh, but he starts, like, you know, riding the escalator up backwards. He kind of rolls over on his back, like, laying on his back, kind of leaned up, looking and seeing what's following him. And we get this shot. This is my favorite shot in the this movie. Is, yeah, this is mine, too. This is probably one of the coolest shots in a horror movie because it's a wide shot. We're at the top of the escalator looking down. In the middle of the, of the, of the, of the screen is the guy... Riding the, ele- the escalator, laying yeah. laying on his back, looking down at the Almost bottom. Almost like coming towards the camera. Mm-hmm. And then from like underneath the tunnel, we see David as the werewolf. This is like the first time we get to see it. Yeah, kind like, of creep- in the light. Kind of creeping out. Mm-hmm. He's like creeping towards. And it's very far away and it's kind of out of focus. So you yeah. don't really get to see it that well. But we just see him start slowly approaching this dude. And then we just cut. That's it. We don't even need to see him. Like, well, I'm taking that back. Well, we, we do a close up of the guy's face. Yeah, we do do like a close up POV from the werewolf up to the dude's face, and then yeah, we just cut. Yeah, and it's the next day. David wakes up in a zoo, naked uh, as completely as naked, and he's he's in the wolf den, and of, of course he is. 
But he escapes, uh-huh. and now he's running through this zoo, butt ass naked. Yep. And there's again another really weird child abuse slash rapey joke <laughs> thing. He sees this kid that's got like uh, four or five balloons, and he he hides in this bush because he's naked. He doesn't want anybody to see him. And, and he, he yells out to the kid, he's like, hey, kid, little boy with the balloons, come over here. And this kid turns around, and he just sees a bush, like a giant, like, really big yeah. bush. And he's like, and the guy, uh, David's calling out, and goes, if you come over here, I'll give you a pound, two pounds. And That's the kid's, their currency. I know, dude. but it's still like, the kid's just like, what the fuck is this bush doing? And he goes over there, and the guy's like, give me your balloons, and... And I'll give you two pounds. And the kid's like, why would a... And he goes, don't you know me? I'm the famous balloon thief. <laughs> and the kid's like, why would a thief give me two pounds? And he goes, come here, I'll show you. And then he runs out from behind the bushes naked, takes the kid's balloons, and just, just runs away. Yeah. And we get another little joke where the kid goes up to his mom. He's like, a naked American man stole my, stole my balloons. <laughs> she's like, what? <laughs> so David's running through the zoo. He steals a woman's raincoat. And... Yeah, he's just he he's he's basically gets on the bus and it's like this woman's raincoat and he's completely naked. Other than that, he goes back to Alex's house. Wait, why did he steal the balloons? I think to cover his junk up until he got something that could cover him up fully. But because we, we do see a shot of the balloon just floating away, right? Uh, that's all I can think of. Why not just like rip a piece of the bush? Mm. Oh. There's not much. Are you going to rip a whole branch off and just <laughs> cover your junk with that? Yeah. I got to say, the camera work is sp- like spot on to the camera work. Because we don't... I don't think you ever get to see anything, really. Yeah, I don't think you, you do. No, do you? you don't. You do not see any yeah. penis. You see bush. You see man bush. But that's about it. Uh, <laughs> got, man yep, bush. Yep. Man in a bush. He, he goes back to Alex's house. <laughs> and Alex has apparently, apparently been waiting up all night uh, for him to come home. He comes in. And he's like, I had a crazy fucking night. <laughs> what about you? Yeah. <laughs> um, he tells me, he's like, you know, I woke up in the zoo. I have no idea what happened. He's like, last thing I remember is you went off to work. I was, you know, at the house reading a book and I woke up naked in the zoo. And Dr. Hirsch calls and he's like, have you heard from David? And she goes, oh, yeah, he's, he's right here. And he's like, I want you to bring David to the hospital and, you know, Make sure he gets here safely and quickly. And as he's doing that, I noticed that he starts gently biting her, which I thought because oh. because I didn't remember ex- I remember he, how the movie ended, but I thought there was a little more to it. I thought he ended up attacking her at the end, like actually attacking her. So when he he starts gently biting her, I was like, oh, foreshadowing. Okay. Um, but no, they they start they get in a taxi, and it's funny because before they get in the taxi, they're walking down the street and. You know, David's like, I've never felt better. I felt the best I've felt in a long time. And he goes to story. He's like, let's go back to your place. Come on. We can have a quickie. Yeah, which is, again, just straight up. It's a bold but move. It's a bold move. They get in the taxi, and they're headed to, Do- to Dr. Hirsch. And the taxi cab makes a Sweeney Todd reference, which I thought was funny. Mm-hmm. But he, the, the cab driver basically tells him, you know, it, it's not safe being out here because, you know, the murders. And David's like, what murders? And he finds out that, you know, oh, six people were murdered last night. And yep. David's like, oh, he, he stops the cab. He's like, he's like, that had to have been me. And it's funny because they're walking through like this courtyardish area, like in the middle of the street. And there's just pigeons everywhere that are like moving out of his way as he's walking. Yeah. And Alex is like, David, come on. We have to go to the doctor. And he's like, did you not hear that? I'm a fucking werewolf. <laughs> Which apparently the edited version of this is I'm a famous werewolf. Oh. Mm-hmm. And David's plan is he's going to get himself arrested. And that way he could be in, you know, a, a jail cell. You know, not worry about the best scenes. Yeah. And so he tries to get himself arrested by basically acting like an asshole in front of a cop. And let's just go through the list of things he yells. Well, well, he goes, first he goes, cop, uh, officer, officer, you have to arrest me. I'm, I was the one who murdered those people last night. And he's like, oh, where are you now? And Alex is trying to like tell the officer, no, he's not. He's just acting crazy. And David's like, I've never seen this woman before in my life. <laughs> and he's like. What do I have to do? Do I have to tell you, do what do I have to do to get arrested? And he starts screaming out. He says, Queen Elizabeth, Elizabeth is a man. man. Prince, Prince Charles, Charles is a, is a faggot. faggot. Winston, Winston Churchill, Churchill was, was full, full of shit. shit. Shakespeare was French. <laughs> and the cop was like, if you don't stop that, I'm gonna have to get you I'm gonna have to arrest you. He's like, that's what I want you to fucking do. <laughs> and, but basically the cop the cop's not gonna arrest him. Uh, there was an actually an additional line too in the script that I saw 
where he says the queen mother sucks cocks in hell, which I thought, what? which I thought was a nod to The Exorcist, uh, but I don't remember when The Exorcist came out. When did The Exorcist uh, come out? Was it before this movie? Uh, it was in the seventies, right? I have no fucking clue. But yeah, he says the queen Wait, mother. Yes, the yeah. queen mother sucks cocks yes, in maybe? hell. Maybe no, I don't know. But yeah, David's like it's not important. Alex, I have to go, but then he confesses his love for her. Uh, the two police officers from Scotland Yard try and track down People David. Really fall in love real fast. Yeah. Two, uh, what is it? What is Although the they quote? They did hug intensely. Relationships based on intense experiences never work out. Is that the line from Speed? <laughs> based on extreme circumstances or something like that never um, work out. How are you going to pull fucking <laughs> life advice from Speed? That's a good line, man. It is true. <laughs> Look at uh, Trump and Melanie. Okay. Uh, God. David calls home and he's mm. like, he tells his uh, sister to tell his family that he loves them, which I think is funny because in the in the movie, David's sister is Rachel and his brother's name is Max, which are John Landis's two kids, Rachel and Max Landis. Oh, no shit. Mm-hmm. I never and caught that. He pulls out a pocket knife in the phone booth and he considers slitting his wrist until he sees across the street. Jack, who is even more deteriorated. Who All is, fucked up. Yeah, he's just like a walking wet noodle at this point. But Jack's standing in front of a porn theater, and he kind of motions inside. And so um, J- uh, David runs across the street, and he buys a ticket, and he goes inside and sits down. And this is the See You Next Wednesday movie, apparently, which is basically just a porn. Yeah, yeah. But... The porn is so fucking funny. Dude. Oh yeah. Um, I actually, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the audio in here so people can hear. But this, this is what happens in in the porn. What are you doing here? You promised never to do this kind of thing again. I never promised you any such thing. Not you, yet, Twitter. I've never seen you before in my life. Oh, sorry. And I just think it's, I think it's fucking funny. It's that I would, <laughs> I want to watch that movie. I did too, because guys just like you know. What are you doing here? I've never seen you before in my life. Oh, sorry. Like, it's the wrong room. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my mistake, guys. So, Davis sits down and talks with Jack, and it's the third time Jack's like, dude, what else? What do I got to do to get 30? You got to kill yourself. Otherwise, you're just going to keep doing this. You're going to keep killing people, and you're, you know. We find out that all the people that are in this theater with them are mm-hmm. David's victims. We get the guy from the escalator, the bums, Harry and his wife. <laughs> Harry, and, yeah. Let's not forget Harry. You know. They all start suggesting different ways that David can kill himself. He <laughs> can drown. They yeah, they're they're blunt. They're very blunt about it. You could drown. You know, you could do this, that. Um, so, David. But we don't. But I don't want to die, dude. You killed us. Yeah. Like, fuck off, David. That's not an exact. Line, yeah. But that's basically there. The the usher and... comes inside as David starts turning into the werewolf again, and he eats he eats the uh, the usher. Yeah. And the two police. Show up apparently like the there's a crowd that starts forming around the theater because the the uh, box what officer what triggers his transformation in this scene? I guess it's just getting dark, man. I mean, I don't think no. you actually have to be outside during a full moon for it to happen. At least not in this mythology in this this movie. All right. But uh, the box officer starts freaking out. Isn't the full moon like a one night thing? Though? I guess so. I don't know. I mean, it, it kind Nothing of. Nothing in this movie makes sense. It kind of is a, a, a still. It's there for like a day or two, but I mean, yeah. Whatever. That's again. Why is that Th- they, the thing I'm questioning in this movie? This police officer enters, sees David eating the usher, runs outside, boards it up, and there's just a huge crowd that starts surrounding the movie theater because everyone wants to see what's going on. David escapes and decapitates one of the police officers, yeah. and it just starts. He, he just starts causing mad chaos. There's panic on the streets of London. There's a huge pileup that's almost comical to a point. Uh, we see someone get ran over. We see someone get thrown through a and shop the, window. Most, a lot of the shots from the trailer are taken from this scene. Yeah. There's a policeman that gets crushed between two cars, but they're like, they like cut right as it's happening, so yep. you don't even get to see like the full effect from it. And yeah, he's just he, there's a huge pileup that goes like two to three minutes just showing wreckage. Yeah, just shit getting all fucked up. And David uh, is just walking through, trying to get away from all the mass hysteria pretty much. Alex and Dr. Hirsch arrive on the scene. The police corner David in like this alleyway, but Alex kind of pushes her way through him and uh, tries to console David. She tells him that she loves him. She's like, you know, oh. I don't, yeah. 
I love you, David. You have to come out. They're going to kill you, whatever. And you get like this close-up of, the, of, the, of David's eyes as a werewolf. And he looks like he kind of understands what she's saying. Yeah. But then, sure enough, he tries to attack her. And these police have the best, best accuracy. Best aim on the They straight up quick scope this, this, this werewolf from a... Like, how far did you say that is? Maybe 100 feet? Yeah. Easily? They Yeah, they put three bullets right in him and... <laughs> yep, David turns back into a man, but he's just, again riddled with bullets and he's dead. Alex cries over his corpse, and that's the end of the movie. Like they pull out, fade to black. That's it. Yeah. So, what do you think of this ending? I think it's the I most mean, logical conclusion. Yeah. I I don't need it's, any kind of. I feel like a movie today would have this ending that would tack on a little epilogue. Well, it's like, and well, and the, I think what makes this ending so kind of like dark and kind of sad is that the whole like there's like there's really fucked up parts of this movie and then really funny parts of this movie so like when this happens you just expect like something funny to happen right after but no it just credits well we do get something funny we cut to the closing credits that has the blue moon cover song that's from the trailer that's just so jazzy and upbeat yeah. And I was saying before the podcast, it kind of mirrors, kind of like buried. But the credits the for buried does not fit. The doesn't fit at all. all. But yeah, I like this ending. I, no, I it's hope good. it's it's a classic ending. I hope Max Landis doesn't do you know that keeps it in the same kind of vein in his reboot. Um, I mean, I don't think. You don't think would, so? I don't. No, I don't think he would be dumb enough to mm. do that. So let's talk some trivia before we get like into happy ending. into the the silver lining. This movie is famous for creating. The category for the Academy Awards for Best Makeup. Rick Baker did a fucking awesome job on this movie. Yeah, like I said, all the practical effects in this hold up. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly look better than some of the shit today. And even the animatronic puppet werewolf that we see throughout the end of the movie looks really good. And they they show it in a way where it's believable. It's very minimal, but when they do show it, it's effective. Kind of like uh, Bruce. The 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 Sharks and Jaws, yeah. Uh, John Landis had to avoid avoid filming any full frontal nudities scenes of David, especially during the transformation scene and during the dream sequences, because uh, not in, David informed them uh, informed John Landis before they started filming that he was not circumcised. Even, what? Even though his character David is Jewish, so they couldn't show his. That's the main reason so you don't get to see. Why we don't get to see any penis? Any penis? All right. Yeah. Uh, the final look of the werewolf was based off of Rick Baker's dog Bosco, <laughs> which I think is funny. What? Uh, Rick Baker was said he was disappointed by the amount of time though that you actually get to see the the werewolf transformation happen because he, they said he filmed a lot, like he spent months working on the stuff to make this thing work, this transformation scene work. And John Landis only really required about seven seconds uh, of his face, the, fa- the shot that we like of his face kind oh, of extending Oh, the one like, where his face like extends. Mm-hmm. That shot, like that shot's fucking insane yeah. though. And, but apparently ba- Baker, you know, <clears throat> changed his mind after doing a screening of the movie. The audience applauded just that one shot alone. Yeah, just, like, rightfully so. Yeah. Um, during a preview of the film, the marquee outside the building says, from the director of Animal House comes an American Werewolf in London. And so... A lot of people went into the movie thinking it was a comedy, and I wouldn't blame them based on the trailer either. And a bunch of people apparently ran out because they were terrified of this movie. Like, even the title is kind of like a bit of a comedic title, in a way. It's almost like making fun of itself. There's an American <laughs> yeah. werewolf, but in London, you yeah. know? Uh, the fake porn movie was actually the first thing to be filmed during production, so can you imagine that first day of filming? Oh my god, best first day ever. And of course, a lot of people know this, but Michael Jackson loved this movie so much, especially the makeup and special effects. And of course, he got the entire crew to he, help him make Thriller. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, for good measure, <clears throat> Thriller is the most you know watched music yeah. video of all time. Um, but yeah, he got pretty much the whole crew to do it. Because yeah, he got what John Landis to direct, mm-hmm. Rick um, Baker to do the makeup, same cinematographer, same uh, composer, and yeah. yeah, even costume design. Oh wow. And I, I aren't they watching American Werewolf in London in I Thriller, or do. they're they're watching the version, the Michael Jackson version of it? Right. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> at the close, and this is kind of a funny credits thing. In yeah. the closing credits, they kind of had like a congratulatory message to Prince Diana and Prince Charles because, of course, <laughs> David shouts Prince Charles is a faggot. Yeah. And I noticed, I don't know if this was in your version of the movie, but when he does call him a faggot in the version I had, it, the audio is kind of weird where they like almost try to mask the fact that he's saying faggot. He says, he says like, Prince Charles is faggot. Like they kind of like cut out the little ah part I in it. I didn't notice Did you notice? That. Okay, maybe it was just my version of it. And I got another uh, uh, kind of a reoccurring thing here, apparently with, with trivia from IMDb for this movie. Another dumb trivia alert. Uh, this is a direct quote from one of the trivia sections of the movie on their IMDb page. It says, one of the several films in which a character and the actor who portrays him share the same name. Cool. I don't, I don't know why that's trivia, but yeah, David Naughton plays I mean, David Kessler. I'm sorry, no movie's ever going to top the Terminator 3. No, no, Terminator 3 is IMDb shit. page is a gold mine. Uh, yeah, that's, that's American Werewolf in London, 1981. Mm. Classic movie. Great movie. Like I said, so just. I still think it's really rough, but it, it's a fun yeah, movie. No, it's a fun movie. It's just it's such a like a confusing. You movie. don't know how you feel the first time you see like, it. I, don't I think. feel like nowadays, like if a movie like this came out where it jumps back and forth, people like we would talk so much shit on it. Well, that's why I think Shaun of the Dead kind of perfected that. Right, riding Shaun the of line. The Dead did it really, really. Whereas this well. one has, it's just like startling when it jumps yeah. from horror to comedy you're kind of like taken out a little like, bit they're like you yeah, fuck transitions let's just you know <laughs> fuck it. uh all right Mally. so what is the silver lining for david or alex or any of the characters in america uh, well, david doesn't have to be a fucking werewolf anymore yeah, that's a good point like he, he's a, he's only a werewolf for what like uh two days two days can you imagine like having to do that for like i'd do ever? it i'd be down to do it being a yeah, werewolf sounds know. awesome, dude. Out of all the classic horror monsters, no, none of them beat. I don't like waking up naked in weird places. Because a werewolf is basically... I mean, something. Well, how many times is there a full moon? Like twice a month, maybe? No, dude, I'm pretty sure full moon is literally one night a month. Is it just one? Okay, that's not bad, because other than that, you're pretty normal. I mean, he seems. he even says, I've never felt better the day after he becomes a werewolf. I mean, I, I can do that. Vampires, you can't go out during the sun. Mummies, you're I don't basically really go just a corpse. The day anyway. <laughs> Frankenstein's a monster, in at least in the classical sense, you're just stupid and a slow moving, basically a zombie. How rude! Uh, my silver lining the is kind of racist. kind of piggybacks off yours. I have to say, all of his victims are now out of limbo, so at least they can rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, Alex got to have a little one night yeah, stand flirt every, thing. He, kill, he <laughs> kills everyone he attacks. Well, no, you're right. Yep. So he does. there's. Everyone no gets chance justified. That the continues on. Yep. We're just, All right. gonna, we're just gonna ignore this. So, although this movie does have a comedic tone to it, it is technically got that downer ending, and you might yeah. not feel so great after watching it. So, what's an alternative? What's a movie people can watch after American Werewolf in London that's gonna bring them up in spirits that is somewhat relevant? I mean, it's the obvious choice, but it's a good choice. I'm going Teen Wolf. Yeah, dude. The movie, not the fucking MTV series. Mm -hmm. Michael J. Fox. I, dude, okay. Playing basketball. This shows my age because <laughs> I'm old as fuck. I have, I, like, this just, it was like two weeks ago. I was talking about Teen Wolf. And someone was like, yeah, dude, I love that show. I'm like, no. no I have that all no. the time, yeah. And, like, I had to, like, explain like i had to pull out my phone and go to imdb and prove no them man it's michael j fox is a werewolf based, playing basketball that it, yeah, <laughs> that it was a movie first <laughs> yeah like i hate kids my pick me up is teen wolf 2 no what? i'm going no i'm going monster squad because okay. i mean might as well have okay. fun with werewolves right, All right it's, it's, why a not? Good, it's a good theme i thought you were serious about teen wolf 2 for oh my that's God. not a, that's a fun one it's one of those so bad it's good. Yeah. Hey, Jason Bateman though. Yeah, Love man. Jason Bateman. It didn't kill his career surprisingly. That's a not a good movie. No, no. Okay, so thank you for listening, everyone, uh, for another episode of Silver Linings. If you enjoy what we do here, please subscribe to us on iTunes since you're already there. Leave us a rating, some feedback if you would. Go on Facebook, like our page, facebook.com/slash Silver Linings Playlist. Mm -hmm. You can give us a suggestion. For a movie that you'd like us to take a look at that's got a downer or a fucked up ending and you want us to talk about it, 
and we'll try and find a silver lining in it if we can. Yeah. Um, yeah. If. So clue for sometimes a big if. Yeah, yeah. Clue for next week, Mally. What you got? Oh, um, you can't give horse tranquilizer to midgets. <laughs> I feel like it's pretty obvious. I okay. Thank you for listening, everybody. Yeah. Uh, everybody, that's twice. That's two weeks in a row. I've done that. Thank you, everybody. Any last words, Molly, before we go? As always, Excelsior. Excelsior.